University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. With their sales filled by impressive victories in their first round matches, two more teams are competing tonight for a place in the quarter-final stage of this competition, which is the prize on offer for the winners. The losers, though, will have to leave the contest to return to the dream of what might have been. The Edinburgh University team have had an easy time of it so far. Up against Peterhouse Cambridge in round one, they won by 270 points to 80, and they'll be pleased to know that that was the highest score in the entire first round fixtures, although they might find that they're up against stiffer competition tonight. With an average age of 21, let's meet the Edinburgh team again. Hello, I'm Ben Russell-Jones. I'm originally from Bridgend in South Wales, but I now live in Cascade near Caerphilly, and I'm studying philosophy and politics. Hello, I'm Lewis Thomas. I'm from Strathkinnis and Fife, and I'm studying for a Master's in History. This is their captain. Hello, my name is Rishi Sundar. I'm from Manchester, and I'm studying computational physics. Hi, I'm Niall Karunaratna. I'm from Hull, and I'm studying physics. Now, the team from Bristol University also managed a very comfortable win in their first round match when they beat Wilson College Oxford by 165 points to 110, which certainly places them among the better performing teams from these first fixtures. With an average age of 24, let's meet the Bristol team again. Hello, I'm Alex Figueroa. I'm from London and I'm studying for an MA in Philosophy of Physics. Hi, I'm Sam Woodcock. I'm from Birmingham and I'm studying Geology. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Seb Priest. I'm originally from Lipstadt in Germany and I'm studying medicine. Hello, I'm Anna Bryan. I'm from Tunbridge Wells and I'm studying economics. Right, I won't waste any time reciting the rules, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. In the singular or plural, what short word appears in all of these titles? Firstly, a 1924 film starring... Douglas Fairbanks and based loosely on The Thousand and One Nights, an acclaimed neo-realist film set in post-war Rome, and a 1955 Hitchcock film starring Cary Grant as a cat burglar on the French Riviera. Ah. Bristol Bryan. Rope. No. Anyone want to buzz from Edinburgh? Um, Douglas Fairbanks. Edinburgh Russell Jones. Thief. Thief is correct, yes. Thief or thieves is correct. <laughs> So you get the first set of bonuses, Edinburgh. They're on literature. In each case, identify the Irish-born Nobel laureate from the quotation. Oh. You don't expect me to know what to say about a play when I don't know who the author is, do you? These words appear in a 1911 stage work by which author? Probably, probably Shaw. Yeah, yeah, he's on that time. George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw is correct. Who said of the televising of one of his best-known works, my play wasn't written for this box, my play was written for small men locked in a big space. It's got Samuel, Beckett. Samuel Beckett. Yeah. Yeah. Samuel Beckett. Correct. Cast a cold eye on life on death, horsemen pass by. These words are the epitaph of which Irish Nobel laureate and appear in his poem under Ben Bulban? Yeats. So, sorry, Yeats or him? So, Yeats. Something Yeats. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Yeats. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. In the 1870s, who composed the pieces known as Anitra's Dance and... Edinburgh Karuna Ratna. Grieg. Grieg is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on Africa in 2011. Resulting in the dissolution of the ruling party, the RCD, and the ousting of President Ben Ali, the Jasmine Revolution took place in which country in 2011? No, Tunisia. Tunisia. Tunisia is correct. President Laurent Gbagbo was arrested by rebel troops of the FRCI after refusing to concede defeat in an election in which country? Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Correct. Following a referendum earlier in the same year, which African country became independent in July 2011? South Sudan. South Sudan. Correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. What novel did Charlotte Bronte describe as a carefully fenced, highly cultivated garden with neat borders and delicate flowers, but no open country, no fresh air, no blue hill, no bonny beck? The novel in question had been published anonymously in 1813. Uh, Bristol Regero. Jane Eyre. No. 
Edinburgh Russell Jones. Pride and Prejudice? Pride and Prejudice is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses, Edinburgh. They're on number theory. In 1770, the English mathematician Edward Waring published the conjecture that every positive integer is the sum of not more than 19 fourth powers, or how many cubes? The answer is a single-digit number. 19 fourth, fourth powers. powers. So it's 4 to the 19 would be, like, what's 4 times 19? That's, like, 76. And is that divisible by 3? So that would be... It's not divisible by 3. Here it is. I'm really 32. Rude no, it's not. It's 9. Oh. Waring's problem built on the four-square theorem of which French-Italian mathematician born 1736? Uh, uh, Lagrange. Yeah. Lagrange. Lagrange is correct. In 1909, which German mathematician proved Waring's general conjecture using an identity in 25-fold multiple integrals? Well, it was Swiss. German. Oh, Riemann, Riemann, probably. 1909. Yeah, Riemann. Oh, yeah. Riemann. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Riemann. No, it's David Hilbert. Bad luck. Right, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture start, you're going to see the first lines of a play by Shakespeare, translated into German. For ten points, give me the English name of the play. Edinburgh Karuna Ratna. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet is correct, yes. <laughs> that specific translation of the first lines of Romeo and Juliet is from the Schlegeltik translation of Shakespeare's works which continues to be widely used after nearly 200 years. Your bonuses are three more opening lines from that translation. Give the English title of the play in each case. Firstly... Do the uh, translation. Oh, a celebratory, like, muse or something. Something in bright heavens and... I can't remember what the rest of it means. Midsummer Night's Dream. Go with it. Could be that. Midsummer Night's Dream. No, it's Oh for a Muse of Fire, of course, the opening lines oh. of Henry V. Okay. okay. Yeah. Secondly... In which I, my son in the world, send, um, forgot that one, something to the grave. something. Yeah, maybe. Grave in two, twice in the grave. Twice um, in the grave. Uh, or, or I send my world twice, I send my son twice into the world. What's that? What would that make sense for? Twice twice my son into the world. Mm -hmm. King Lear? Yeah. King Lear. No. Lear. Lear makes sense. I guess it sounds tragic. King Lear? Uh, it's all's well that ends well. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah. But it was fun listening to you translate it. Finally, this play, the translation here is by Teek's daughter, Dorothea. When we, when we meet... Macbeth. The... Yeah. yeah, when will we oh, meet yeah, again? Uh, Macbeth. Correct. <laughs> right, ten points for this. The name of what bird begins those of an order of barnacles with a pronounced pendant or stalk? Crystal Woodcock. Goose. Goose is correct. Palpable relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very much. Right, here are your bonuses. Perhaps you'll get all three of them. Your bonuses are on Britain in the 18th century. In each case, I need the name of the person who was Prime Minister at the time of the following. Firstly, the death of King George I and the accession of George II. Walpole, yeah. Walpole? Yes, it was Sir Robert Walpole. Well done. The Jacobite Rebellion, secondly, that ended with the Battle of Culloden. Oh, God, when's Culloden? Yeah, when is Gladden? Se late 1740s? Like yeah. Oh, I don't know who's after that. Pitt. 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 Pitt the Elder? Pitt the Elder, yeah, it could be Pitt the Elder. Pitt the Elder wasn't... Mm. Was he in the 50s? I, don't, I think it was two before him, but we can try. He was not... Prime Minister for very long, though, was he? No, he wasn't. Have we got anything else? No, more? just go yeah. for it. Yeah, Pitt the Elder? No, it was Pelham. <laughs> and finally, the US Declaration of Independence and the British defeat at Saratoga. Mm -hmm. Lord North. Lord North, yeah, seven okay. yeah. Lord North. Correct, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. In 2018, it was reported that an applied electrostatic field could induce superconductivity in stacks formed from two precisely misaligned sheets. Of what material? Uh, two... Bristol Regero. Graphene. Graphene is correct. Well done. <laughs> you get bonuses on astronomy. Which red supergiant star is the brightest in the constellation Scorpius? Its name contains the letters of the word star, though not in that order. Oh, God, I should know this. Uh, it begins with an Antares. Antares. Antares? Antares is correct. About 25 light years away, which star of spectra type A is the brightest in Piscis Austrinis? 
This name contains the letters of the word hot, though not in that order. Uh, I think it's formal hold. Uh, Go for nom it. Nominate Woodcock. Formal hold. Formal hold is correct. Finally visible from the southern hemisphere and the second brightest in the night sky. The name of which star contains the letters of the word sun? Again, not in that order. I'm worse at Southern Hemisphere, I'm afraid. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't... Might end in US. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, no okay. uh, Pass. It's Canopus. Yeah. Ten points for this. What term appears in the title of the Manifesto of 1886 by the critic Jean Moreas and denotes the, the artistic movement then emerging in France, which used indirect suggestion to express mystical ideas, emotions and states of mind. Its prominent figures included Mallarmé, Verlaine and Rambo. Edinburgh Russell Jones. Symbolism. Symbolism is correct. <laughs> but he's going to set the bonuses on ducks this time. What name is given to a coloured patch of wing feathers that's a distinguishing feature of many species of dabbling duck? The same word denotes a device used in medicine for examining an internal body cavity. Body cavity? It's like the little hammer thing that they do. <laughs> I don't know. I've got a clue. I don't know. It's stethoscope. <laughs> stethoscope is like an and a mallet. Um, <laughs> speculum? I don't know. All right, I'm, I'm going to go with that. Me. I don't know Sorry. what it means. Speculum. It is a speculum, yes. I'm so relieved you're not a doctor. <laughs> but, uh, Having a fact. green speculum and a blue forewing, Anas clypeata has what common name referring to its distinctive spoon-shaped bill used to strain animals and plants from water? Spoon-shaped? Spoonbill. But you said spoon. Yeah, it can't be spoonbill. I don't think it's spoonbill. Would you have said sp spoon? We just said spoon-shaped bill. It's probably not going to be a spoonbill. It's another word for a spoon, like a si uh, ladle. Spoonbill ducks are a thing. A ladle OK, we'll go with it. If it's an actual thing, then spoonbill. No, it's a shoveler. Yeah, that's uh, like a Also having a green speculum of a similar colour to a stripe on the, the head of the male, what is the smallest species of duck that's native to Britain? A mallard, maybe? Uh, mallard. No, it's teal, which is much smaller than a mallard. Ten points for this. Which city is this? Its Latin name, Hafnia, is the source of the name of a ah. chemical... Bristol Woodcock. Copenhagen. Copenhagen is correct. Well done. <laughs> You get three bonuses on Hindu iconography. With the name meaning Lord of the People, which god is depicted with a rounded belly and often accompanied by a plate of sweets? Vishnu or Krishna? No, it's, um, it's neither of those. Really? Is it Ganesh? Yeah. Oh, could, no, it could be, it could be. It could be Ganesh. Yeah, yeah it could be. Uh, Ganesh? Ganesh is correct, yes. yes. Ganesh is depicted with the head of what animal? Elephant. Symbolising yeah. his status as a remover Elephant. of obstacles. Correct? Ganesh is depicted with a broken tusk. Mm -hmm. One of several legends says he broke it off to use it to write which Hindu epic concerning the conflict between the Pandavas and the Kauravas. Did we read the Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, yeah. Or, or just the, generally the Mahabharata. But I'd say Bhagavad Gita. I'd, I'd, I'd go with Mahabharata. OK. OK, uh, nominate Ruggiero. Uh, Mahabharata? Correct. <laughs> We're going to do the music round now. If your music starter, you're going to hear an aria from an opera. For ten points, please name the opera. Bristol Woodcock. Carmen. Carmen is correct, yes, it's the Havaniera. <laughs> that performance of the Havaniera from Carmen was by soprano Leontine Price, one of the first African-Americans to become an international opera star. Your music bonuses are three more recordings by Leontine Price. Again, I want the title of the opera in each case, please. Firstly... Uh, yeah, it sounds like Dido. Have you got Aida? Aida? Yeah. Aida? Yeah. yeah. Aida? That's no, Dido and Aeneas. Secondly... <laughs> Nothing like Verdi, then. <laughs> I do recognise this. Is that Aida? <laughs> no, no, this sounds like Puccini, I think. Oh, uh, maybe it's some... Um, uh, 
and <laughs> and uh, uh, Madame Butterfly. Or Turandot. Uh, Turandot. Um, yeah, just go for one. Uh, Madame Butterfly. No, it's Aida. Oh, it is. <laughs> and finally. Oh, that's definitely Pagini. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that um... or not? <laughs> no, I think there's Pagini. Could that be Madame Butterfly? Um, potentially, I'm thinking sort of um, second act, Pinkton's back, not. I would go Madame Butterfly now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Madame Butterfly. No, it's from Tosca. <laughs> Bad luck. You were right with Puccini, though. Right. Max Wertheimer, in 1912, published the paper considered to mark the founding of which school of psychology, known by a German term, meaning the way in which... Edinburgh Russell Jones. Gestalt. Gestalt is correct, yes. <laughs> that takes you beyond the 100 mark. You get three questions on the obscure. Dry, obscure, contrary to all ordinary ideas and prolix to boot. These are the words of which German philosopher describing his, one of his own works published in 1781? 1781, is that prior to Hegel? Is, Hegel. is it Hegel's and, around the turn, of, I think, no, of the Hegel, century? Hegel's turn of the century. The next century. Oh, no, who was, who was before, quite dry in, who was before him? Yeah. Like Kant? Yeah. Kant was around that team, wasn't it? Yeah, I think Kant's probably you better than Kant. Hegel. Yeah. Kant? Kant, in a flash of insight, is correct. Lovely. Art historians have suggested that a camera obscura was part of the working method of which Dutch artist, born in 1632, citing as examples paintings such as The Music Lesson? It's Vermeer. Yeah. Vermeer. Yeah. Vermeer. Vermeer is correct. The past participle of which French verb is sometimes used in English to mean far-fetched or obscure? Other forms of the same verb appear on French web pages where they mean search. Ooh. So something ER, probably? Voyager? No. Voyager? Recher? Voyager, Voyager, Voyager because that, I mean, that implies yeah. distance as well. Yeah. yeah. Voyager? Right. Voyager. No, it's Recherche. Yeah, there we are. Ten okay. points for this. In the context of diagnostic and screening tests, for what do the letters PPV stand? You all look blank. Edinburgh Sundar. Personal Protection Visor. <laughs> Uh, no. Anyone want to buzz from Bristol? No. It's positive predictive value. Ten points for this. Influenced by the works of Chaucer, the King's Quare or King's Book is a love dream allegory attributed to which Scottish monarch, a prisoner at the English court? Edinburgh Thomas. James I. James I is correct, yes. Right, so you get a set of bonuses on the US politician Nellie Taylor Ross. In which US state was Ross elected to serve as governor in 1924? Its constitution was the first in the world to grant full voting rights to women. Do we have any idea, like, geography is just vague? When I'm thinking of the constitution, I think Massachusetts. Yeah, but like New that's, England. That's New, of nothing. New Hampshire, I think. Or something. New Hampshire. You, I'm okay. very happy to see you yeah. on this, I mean. New Hampshire. That's Wyoming. Okay, there was nobody. After her term as governor, Ross led the campaign for the women's vote for which presidential candidate in 1932? Yeah. Roosevelt. But maybe it's not necessarily successful, but I mean, I yeah, think it, it would maybe be FDR. Sounds like Roosevelt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, FDR? Yes, that's correct. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, yes. As the first female director of the US Mint, Ross oversaw the introduction of a 1938 new nickel depicting which early US president? He still appears on the coin. It's Nickel. Nickel. Mm -hmm. like Jefferson. Jefferson. Fifth, fifth president was Monroe. I mean. Do you think he's, you know, got enough status to be in the Nickel? Uh, the doctrine was pretty famous. Do, do you have any uh, ideas, Lewis? Or? Sorry. Do you have I've, any ideas? I've not got any I, th I know Washington's on, so, but I can't remember if he's on the Nickel or the Dime. Well, I go, mean, for, go for Jefferson, maybe. Yeah, Come on, let's have it. Jefferson. It is Jefferson. Yes, Ooh, well done. Goodness. Right, ten points for this. Types of what physical feature include? Fan, shoot, plunge, and horsetail. And a break, Karuna Rodna. Kev. Now you lose five points. Ah. For Crystal Regero. Waterfall. Waterfall is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on infectious particles, Bristol. In each case, identify the particle from the description. Firstly, an agent of certain plant diseases, a particle consisting only of a small circular RNA molecule and no protein coat. So some kind of plasmid, but yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it could just be a plasmid, couldn't it? Um, small RNA molecule. Go for that one, just be quiet. Yeah, plasmid. No, it's a viroid. Viroid. Any of the viruses that infect bacteria or archaea, for instance, the T1 to T7 varieties uh, used in laboratory research. Bacteriophage? Correct. What five-letter term denotes abnormally folded proteins that yeah. cause... Yeah. Prion. Prion is correct. <laughs> and we're going to take the second picture around now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a photograph of a sports person who you'll need to identify. Edinburgh Russell Jones. Moeen Ali. Moeen Ali is correct. <laughs> Moeen Ali was announced as the captain of the Birmingham Phoenix team in the inaugural edition of the 100 Cricket Tournament this year. As one of the so-called local heroes assigned to each of the franchises, for your bonuses, you're going to see three more such players from the men's game. Five points for each you can identify. First, this player representing Southern Brave. Uh, it's Chris Jordan, is it? It looks like Chris Jordan. Uh, I think. Is it not Archer? No, it's not no, Archer. No, it's not. Oh, go for Chris Jordan. Then. Chris Jordan. It is Chris Jordan, Chris yes. Jordan. Secondly, this player representing the Oval Invincibles. That's uh, Jason Roy. Roy. Yeah, Jason Roy. It is Jason Roy. And finally, this player representing the Northern Superchargers. <laughs> Adil Rashid. Rashid. Yeah. Adil Rashid. Adil Rashid. Adil Rashid is correct. <laughs> right, what edible substance appears in all of the following titles? Angelina Jolie's directorial debut about the Bosnian War, the debut album... Enterprise Sundar. Chocolate. Now you lose five points. The debut album by the rock group Radiohead and the debut play by Sheila Delaney. Bristol Bryan. Honey. Honey is correct, yes. <laughs> right, here are your bonuses. They're on words that end with the same three letters as the capital of Samoa. In each case, give them a word or name from the description. Firstly, a Latin word meaning horn of plenty, represented in art as overflowing yeah, with... Cornucopia. Cornucopia is correct. Species of African fish of the cichlid family, mainly freshwater, they're widely consumed in the US. Uh, it's not tilapia, then. Um, what, three letters again? P-I-A. P-I-A. Okay. Oh. Tilapia? No? Might be tilapia. Yes, it's okay. tilapia. Tilapia is correct, yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Finally, some editions of Ursula Le Guin's novel, The Dispossessed, have the subtitle An Ambiguous What? Ambiguous. Anything? No. Uh, pass. That's Utopia. Ten points for this. Showing the title figure trapped in a hawthorn bush as the Lady of the Lake reads to him from a book of spells, The Beguiling of Merlin is a work of the... Edinburgh Russell Jones. Ben Jones. Ben Jones is correct, yes. You get a set of bonuses on the contiguous English counties in which silt and cheese may be produced. In each case, identify the county from the description. Firstly, the location of Saddle Minster and the region of Parkland known as the Dukeries. So what's around, like, so like around Somerset area? That's yeah, right. I mean, you can go with Somerset first and then, you know... It'll work yeah. eventually. Yeah, I mean, that's where places with Minster generally are. Yeah. Somerset. No, it's Nottinghamshire. Oh, dear. Dear, it? Secondly... The county that is home to Kettleston Hall, Cork Abbey, and the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. Isn't that Derwent Water in like Don't, Lake District? Yeah. So like, that's quite a long way to go up, though. Yeah, it is. Derbyshire's is the only Derbyshire. I think Derbyshire's is these. Yeah, because yeah, Derbyshire goes. Go for it, go for it. Yeah. Derbyshire. Derbyshire is correct. The location of Beaver Castle and the battlefield of Bosworth, finally. Leicestershire, probably. Yeah. Leicestershire. Leicestershire. Correct. Ten points for this. I need the name of an element here. The three main types of meteorite are stony, those ah. consisting of... Crystal Woodcock. Iron. Iron is correct. Well done. <laughs> Your bonuses are on musical chords. What term describes the note from which a chord is named and which is often, though not always, the lowest note Tonic. in the chord? Tonic. <laughs> Tonic. No, it's root. <gasps> what single word describes the shifting of the root to a position other than the lowest in the chord? Inversion. Inversion. Inversion is correct. A major chord with the top note raised one semitone is referred to by what term? Uh, augmented. So, yeah, I th augmented, I think. Augmented. augmented? Augmented is correct. There are two and a half minutes to go, and ten points at stake for this. 
The 1960s science fiction film The Village of the Damned about a group of sinister telepathic children is based on which 1957 book by the British author John... Bristol Wayne? Bryan. Uh, the Midwich Cuckoos. The Midwich Cuckoos is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on scientists. I need the surname in each case, and all three begin with the same two letters. Which British physicist and author published the 1959 work The Two Cultures and the Scientific Revolution? Ah, uh, C.P. Snow. Snow. Should say Snow. Snow. Correct. Very good. Born in Leyden in the late 16th century, which astronomer gives his name to a law concerning the refraction of light? Snell. No, no, ooh, yes, yes. Snell. Snell is correct. In 1862, which Dutch physician developed an eponymous chart comprising rows of capital letters to test the acuity of distant vision? Uh, Snellen, I think. Uh, Snellen. Snellen is correct. <laughs> You're coming back strongly. Ten points for this. Carpenter, weaver, driver, army, pharaoh and fire. Crystal Woodcock. Ant. Ant is correct. <laughs> that puts you on level pegging and the bonuses are on world history. In each case, give the decade of the 19th century in which the following took place. Firstly, the establishment of the Holy Alliance in Europe and the Battle of Boyaca that freed Colombia from Spanish control. It's going to be 1810s or 20s, probably 20s. 20s. Uh, 20s. 1820s, I, I, I think. Really know. I'm just throwing things out there. 1820s, I think. 1820s. Oh, it's the 1810s. Sorry. <laughs> just Secondly, the capture of Nanjing by the Taiping rebels and the Dred Scott decision by the US Supreme <laughs> Court. The Taiping Rebellion. 1850s? 1850s. Okay. Let's go with that. Yeah. 1850s. 1850s is correct. And the founding of the Indian National Congress and the major eruption of Krakatoa. Um, it's 1890s, right? 1890s. Uh, 1890s, I think. Yeah. yeah. 1890s, yeah. go. 1890s? That was the 1880s. Ten <laughs> points for this. Indicating a means of transport, what word appears with Mr Norris, Stamboul? Edinburgh Thomas! Trains. Trains is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on a play by Shakespeare. Rosalind, Celia, Orlando and Oliver are characters in which of Shakespeare's comedies set partly in the Forest of Arden? As you like it. As you like it. As you like it. Correct. What is the name of the jester in As You Like It? The name is also a term that can mean a criterion by which something is assessed or recognised. Touched, and I think, okay. but... Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you were just gone girl. Bad luck. You, you were doing well, very well. It was a good game all round. Thank you all very much for playing. We're going to have to say goodbye to you, though, Bristol, but you, it was a great performance. Thank you very much for joining us and taking part. Edinburgh, congratulations to you. We shall look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. Thank you. I hope you can join us next time for another second round match, but until then, it's goodbye from Bristol University. Goodbye. goodbye. And goodbye from Edinburgh University. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>